Good afternoon. Let me begin by thanking David Rubenstein, John Gray, David Scorton, and I want, um, I don't think David is here, but those of you who will see him later on, tell him that he has one more follower on, on Twitter. So, so, so he now has, well, just one more. Um, and of course, uh, Amanda Moniz and everybody involved with the philanthropy initiative at the Smithsonian. This is a really important and timely symposium, fascinating array of ways in which uh, we now support the arts. Thanks for inviting me, and what I will call this is a, a kind of report, uh, notes from the field uh, about the power of art to build community. Our focus is community. The theme today of the role of philanthropy in advancing art and culture in American life is one I <clears throat> came to um, after a lifetime in law and the news business in newspapers mainly, uh, but with the bias of an art lover, smitten since a junior high school trip to the old Metropolitan Opera and the purchase of a small painting of a peach that I still have at a community art fair sometime in the 1950s when I was in high school. The topic resonates deeply with me. At Knight Foundation, we share David Rubenstein's enthusiasm for what he called patriotic philanthropy committed to a democratic republic with an informed and engaged citizenry at its core. Our mission, then, is to support informed and engaged communities. Investing in art and culture is central to that mission, and I can tell you why in just nine words. Art binds people to place and to each other. Art and culture build community. That's not just something I know in my bones, to be true, it's a conviction confirmed by our grant-making experience and by extensive Gallup polling. Over the course of three years, from 2009 to 11, Knight and Gallup spoke with 43,000 people in 26 communities around the country. Our question was really very simple. What attaches you to the place where you live? The study was called Soul of the Community, and we found that contrary to conventional wisdom, Social offerings and aesthetics bind people to place and to each other even more than what we had expected, education or jobs. Art binds. Culture generates social capital and strengthens a community's character. Art brings people together physically at galleries, museums, performance spaces, and culturally <clears throat> through its capacity to tell a community's shared story to inspire reflection and form connections that transcend differences. The insight that art and culture bind people to place has animated our work ever since the Gallup study. It inspired the launch of the Night Arts Program, uh, which over the last 10 years has awarded more than $270 million to artists and arts institutions in just eight cities across the country. That includes $125 million in Miami, which has been ground zero for our efforts and that I'd like to tell you about today. The results have really been quite breathtaking. Art is everywhere in Miami, immersive and inescapable, engaging people in their lives day to day. In the past decade, Miami has built two concert halls, an opera house, a science museum, three public art museums, three private art museums, dozens of art galleries, and one of the most innovative poetry festivals in America, O oh Miami, where our goal is to reach every, every person in the county of two million people with a poem at least once in April. Art Basel, Miami Beach, the biggest art fair in North America, just celebrated its 11th season, and the Miami Book Fair continues to be among the top five in the nation. We've begun to develop an independent film scene, invested in music education, and improved our ballet. In Wynwood, warehouse walls are canvases for art. Every third, every third grader in the county comes through once a year through the, to the Perez Art Museum. Thousands more high schoolers visit the Institute of Contemporary Art. In Miami, a vibrant city of exiles and immigrants that used to be a transient waypoint, art is a permanent fixture helping to build a culture that can last. 
This explosion of art, of course, didn't just happen. It was 30 years in the making and required artists, government, audiences, and of course, philanthropy. Along with some very generous private donors, I'm very glad to say that we at Knight did our part and served as catalyst. The Knight Arts Challenge, our flagship arts contest, has received more than 24,000 proposals in Miami alone. We use local artists to, add, to advise and ensure that the art is good, and we've selected nearly 1,000 winners as diverse as Miami itself. We don't try to fund a specific field of art, but rather to create a sense in cities and towns that art is accessible, that art is general. The success of that simple and open approach has helped us develop a coherent, transferable model for art funding in community, to create community, to form community, to build community. After 10 years, we've taken away three key lessons. Number one, leverage a community's natural assets. Number two, simultaneously fund institutions and emerging art to create momentum. And number three, intensify the impact by narrowing the geographic focus. So number one, don't boil the ocean. Leverage what's trending in that community. Look for where and how and what art is being created. In Miami, we noted a 30-year film festival, a big number of art collectors, the arrival of Art Basel, this is 10 years ago, and <clears throat> the proliferation of all manner of music. So we started there. Like any community endeavor, funding arts should be organic, an authentic reflection of a place, its people, and its history. Number two, simultaneously fund art institutions and emerging grassroots arts. We've invested in most of Miami's arts institutions, though not as the biggest funder, both to encourage others <clears throat> and to extend our resources. But meanwhile, we're by far the biggest funder of grassroots arts, not only to expand access, but to create buzz. One large grant to a museum paid over time does not spark as much attention as 60 small grants to 60 individuals every year. If you do both simultaneously, you turn on the heat. And after six or seven years, you're really cooking. Number three, the third lesson is to intensify the impact by focusing on a clearly defined geographic area. Geographic focus makes it more likely, than, more likely that audiences will know the artist, the organizations, and the venues. Familiarity breeds support and a belief that art belongs in my community. I'm pleased to say we've already begun to use this model in other cities. In Akron, for example, we, we, we're building on the region's tradition in, of modern dance. Knight has established a national choreographic center in partnership with Dance Cleveland and the University of Akron uh, during the Detroit bankruptcy, as you heard earlier, uh, in partnership with Ford, and Darren was absolutely spectacular in his leadership of that effort, and Kresge and other foundations, we actually bought the Detroit Institute of Art, uh, saving a treasured piece of culture for the city and the region. In Charlotte, we've helped stand up a program for artist residencies at the McCall Center for Art and Innovation. In Macon, we funded the Otis Redding Summer Camp for young musicians, and so on. In respo the response in communities to these have been universally positive, and of course, there's more. We live in a digital and social media world, so we support the use of digital technology to create and present art. We endowed the New World Symphony's digital media capacity to reach audiences in and outside the concert hall. We fund digital media experts to work as part of museum curatorial staffs, inside the curatorial staff, not on the marketing staff, in the curatorial staff to help develop programs that meet audiences where and how they live, which is increasingly digital. We've also commissioned crowdsourced symphonies to express the, lo the local authentic sounds of Detroit, Akron, Miami, and now Philadelphia, which is yet to premiere, and will be in Philadelphia at the Kimmel, and then later by the Philadelphia Orchestra at Carnegie Hall. And we're really just getting started on that. 
This is a case study in strategic, practical, and impactful philanthropy. It is aimed at producing better art, more engaged, and stronger communities. I cannot stress enough the importance and power of philanthropy to fund risk, to act as a catalyst, and to keep funding until we reach critical mass. And I cannot stress enough the power of the results. Imagine every American living in a community where art is alive and accessible, where art is general, where art is free to bind people to place and to each other. And philanthropy can lead the way. Thank you.